Hello and welcome to another episode of Thinking Critically, a D&D discussion. My name is Danlo, a D&D dude, and I like all kinds of games and the crunchy mechanics that make them tick. Today, I'm joined by Ian Langton, a long-time D&D player with plenty of experience, all the way back to second edition. And he plays the bugbear death cleric Grishnak in my own campaign. Welcome, Ian. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, Danilo. I have indeed been playing D&D for a long time. In fact, um, I started back in the late 80s. Um, and in fact, my first three tentative steps were even further back than second, starting with first uh, edition. Oh, take a drink. <laughs> so indeed, uh, I'm playing a number of games at the moment. I think it's fair to say that I took a very long hiatus. So I started back when I was 10, probably played till my late teens and then uh, kind of really took a break until a couple of years ago, missing a few editions that won't be, shan't, shan't be named. And yeah, you know, I've, I've never looked backwards since. All right, cool. Thank you very much. So today, this episode, we're tackling the intriguingly ambiguous topic of experience. Ian, what does that mean to you? Absolutely. It's a, a massive topic. And, and to be fair, we could probably write several sets of encyclopedias on it, but we'll try and pick out their key bones, I guess. So I think for me, there's quite a lot of places where it can apply. Firstly, I think, and, and maybe as a nice bridge from my own experience and, and someone that's played the game for a long time, player experience is a key facet of, of D&D. &D. Mm. And really, obviously, that really influences both how obviously the players play, you know, what the experience of the DM is can, can make a big impact on the game too. Um, mm. And likewise, obviously, different levels of, uh, of player experience can make huge, huge differences on, on the overall experience for the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I think as soon as I started writing my notes about this, I underestimated how broad this topic is. But uh, that it makes me very happy because it means that the format of the podcast is right because the whole point is that we come at it from all these different angles and vectors and with all different, oh, I don't know, experiences of that topic. So let's start with the literal definition of the word and just talk about the, the experience of playing D&D as it is just, just in its raw format at the table. What do you look for to ensure you have a fun time, which is, of course the objective of everybody. Absolutely. So I think for me, a big part of it is about variety. I think every every game of D&D I've ever played has, has had something unique to offer, and particularly as you move between different groups of players um, and obviously you know, the, the, the different character that you may pick absolutely has a, a huge influence on how you play. But really what I'm looking for, I think, personally, for a good D and D experience, uh, is plenty of variety. I think I, I definitely prefer longer, you know, more narrative-driven campaigns. But I think also it's great to see those narratives almost be created organically as the campaign runs on. You mm -hmm. know, so you're almost writing your own story rather than sort of almost being railroaded into to someone else's. Mm. When you say when you say variety, there you're talking about the three core pillars of D and D. Absolutely. And and I think for me, particularly a lot of my experience was very heavily combat driven in some of the campaigns that I played when I was much, much younger. So there's one pillar there that, that has some mm -hmm. bias. But I think really, I think like anything, it's cliche to say variety is the spice of life. But I do think that like a great artist, uh, an ideal campaign is kind of well painted, making use of all three of those pillars. So not one of them ends up being the overwhelming part. Okay, so talking of your experience then and what you're looking for, now we have that as a, as a control group, do you have any examples of good or bad experiences you've had at the table? So I guess a way to put that is a couple of examples of where you've hit that target and you've reached your balance of three pillars or maybe an example of where that hasn't quite been the case. Yeah, absolutely. So as I mentioned, if I kind of compare um, and, and probably have a real a real spectrum of two extremes of, of you know, probably playing D&D &D nigh on 30 years ago 
where a lot of the game was very much, you know, ex, um, you know, very emphasized yeah, on dungeon the, crawl. Uh, yeah, very much a dungeon crawl. You know, almost like the game was felt like. You know, Hero Quest or, or maybe Gloomhaven mm-hmm. today, you know, very, very mechanical um, and, and very about the rules and, and almost mm-hmm. almost playing to win. Maybe like a board game or a, you know, a Games Workshop title that I also used mm-hmm. to play a lot of at the time. It was uh, ad- adversarial a bit more than it is now, would you say? Absolutely. Um, and, and almost, you know, that you were trying to beat the, the Dungeon Master and the Dungeon Master was almost trying to create challenges and hurdles for the party to, to get over not necessarily for fun but almost just to, to say you know it, it, it's yeah. like a test which was just the kind of way we approached it back when we were a lot younger and really probably some of the the role play aspects and the uh, exploration aspects the other two sort of key pillars were, were quite incidental um i think probably only when we maybe started to play some pre-mades that maybe some more of that got forced into the gameplay um mm-hmm. because somebody uh, you know far cleverer than us had actually thought uh, you know of creating that sort of balance mm-hmm. so we're going to talk about dming a bit later on and there's a point i want to loop back to when, when we get there sure so my experience of playing and i think one way to get a better experience for everyone at the table and it's been mentioned in every previous episode is this concept of a session zero as we say and i won't go through why my one perhaps wasn't the best but i think one of the best things to do to ensure that everyone has the best experience is alignment between players and dms and that just only ever gets more and more clear to me you can take steps to bend that alignment closer together mid play but just as it is with everything in life, once you've set the wheels in motion, it's always harder to bring things back on track than it is to start on the same track. Um, and of course, you run the risk of you know, snapping that alignment and potentially losing a player. Myself, so I've pretty much been DMing consistently for four years, never once a pre-made, probably foolishly, I have to say. But uh, it's always been some form of homebrew and I'm di- dipping in and out of playing during that time. And for me, I would say that if I took everything from a high level, a holistic view, DMing would probably be ever so slightly more fun than, than playing. But the weird thing is I probably couldn't tell you why other than I keep doing it so it I must enjoy it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be mad. It's a good point. I think in some ways, and again, probably going back to that experience where I used to DM um, a lot more, uh, you know, having come back to it more recently, uh, you know, I haven't sort of sat in the DM chair so much, except maybe a couple of shorter games with my, my, my much younger daughter, which was a whole different kind of experience. <laughs> I think for me, DMing was almost like a, you know, you almost didn't want to do it in, in some ways. It was kind of like you you all knew you had to take turns at it because you know some, hmm. someone had to do it when we were in those early games. Maybe just nobody had that god complex down low. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I can't say, but for sure, it did make things difficult because it, where you don't have that stable DM, that obviously also makes a big difference to a campaign. So you know we'd almost end hmm. up cycling the same characters, where the DM would also have a character, but not in that game. Hmm. Um, and then you'd almost yes. kind of round robin the DM with obviously one player dropping out and, and swapping to the DM, which kind of, you know, if I contrast that with, you know, take an example of the campaign that I'm currently at the table at playing uh, with yourself and, mm-hmm. you know, a, a larger, um, you know, much more mature group. I think that A, having that almost like a, a steady DM makes a huge mm-hmm. difference because you know that this character that you've you've built you're going to continue to develop that one single relationship um, yeah. and, and the character development with the DM uh, rather than trying to make that character portable where you could lift <laughs> them up and pick them between campaigns where, you know, stuff like backstory mm. and stuff is, is very difficult to get across. Oh yeah. That's, that's, that's really, really interesting. Cause I've never, I've never had that experience. The closest it gets for me is basically making something for a one shot where a lot less, time is spent on the backstory because ultimately it doesn't really matter the dm hasn't got time to 
build up this whole world that includes all your backstories and whatnot. So I guess that's as close as you're going to get. But even that one shot still seems like a completely different experience to what you're describing back in the older editions. So you, you mentioned earlier on about how the DM, A, that it was kind of a less preferred role, which is bizarre, but I think you're, even nowadays people are always sometimes struggling to find DMs. I think that's always going to be because the numbers work that way, six players to one DM, there's always going to be a, more players than there are DMs, so you're always going to have that trouble. Mm. But you mentioned there that their job, or at least for your games, their role was to put hurdles in front of the players and, and to challenge the players and to beat the players more. And it might not have been quite that black and white, but I imagine very much so it was more in that direction, more so than it is now. Oh, absolutely. I think the experience of playing like that was almost, you were almost playing to win, which is, mm -hmm. you know, the polar opposite, um, really, of, um, you know, how I certainly aim to play now um, and, and how I think, if I'm truthful, my view is how D&D is best played, um, is, is played for fun. Um, and actually, mm -hmm. I suppose, just like life, um, not to get too profound, you know, inevitably failures happen along the way, especially with a cruel mistress of a, a D20 to, to deal with. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, those failures enrich the campaign and, and create talking points and, and fun. Whereas if I contrast that with that sort of kind of toxic kind of play to win style, um, yeah. th then absolutely, you know, I remember and obviously partly emotional maturity factors into it as well. But I remember, sure. you know, th th there were times when, when we had TPKs and the players were, were emotionally crushed. You know, it's like they'd, they'd lost uh, a dear friend in a character um, mm. and also they'd been beaten. And so mm -hmm. that then breeds probably the worst part of that, that, that whole experience of, of playing that way um, when I was, I was younger, which was inevitably where you're trying to play to win, the rules almost mm. become your tool. Yeah. So whereas, yeah. whereas almost the rules, when we talk about more recent campaigns, are almost a, a mechanism to keep order between the players. Yeah, to enable play, basically. Absolutely. Um, and, and give an opportunity for people to try stuff and, and assign mm -hmm. ultimately some kind of probability to how likely it is they, they may succeed. Um, and ca characters dying is pretty much a game over screen, as literal as you can get. So you've, you've, you've lost in that sense. Absolutely. So I can, I can imagine that breeds the animosity between players and DMs if you're trying to win you haven't got to that case okay well then i've lost a go i'm not having fun anymore <laughs> uh, yeah i mean absolutely the, the the rules lawyering that stems from that is just insane um uh, you know and 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 kind of if i you know again to try and contrast the two um and, and perhaps have the benefit to be able to do that i remember the times where one character in our group had a a, a vorpal sword uh, which you know yeah, you know, mm -hmm. was kind of like you know, an, an instant decapitation. But of course, yeah. the rules were super ambiguous. You know, if it's got a head and can be decapitated, so like, does mm. that mean I can chop a dragon's head off? Is that okay? Yeah. But now, whereas if I was to confront that situation on either side of the screen today, mm -hmm. then I, I'd kind of work with a player and say, well, okay, mm, maybe I was foolishly a give you that weapon in the first place. <laughs> um, but even then, um, you know, you'd work with them to work out a scope that's going to work for the campaign and, and be fun for everybody rather than just say oh cool don't worry adult dragon bam oh look i got lucky rise dead yeah yeah uh, you know so and and then of course there was all sorts of ambiguity in between you know did this creature have a head is that something that could be severed so mm -hmm. and and that is i can only say that the absolute tip of the iceberg um <laughs> you know there, there was all sorts of crazy debates and and sometimes games would break down for hours now the one positive part of playing when you're a lot younger is obviously you know disposable time is absolutely at a premium um so mm. you know to engage in a, a three hour debate doesn't feel um <laughs> you know uh quite the same way as like you've wasted wasted your evening exactly where whereas now even a 10 minute tangent debating rules or something would would yep. actually probably feel to me like I've done the table a disservice. Um, mm. And, you know, e literally as the seconds tick by, I I'd be crying inside. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. 
that that is difficult from a dm's perspective because you've got a lot of things to manage moment to moment you have you know patience you have the just the, the time limit of the session you've got i need to finish this at a time that isn't too late but at a time that is fulfilling and not just in the middle of a campfire and everyone's sitting down well it's time to go to bed everyone stop playing because that sucks but it's not only that kind of stuff but also the individual player experience that they're having at that very moment and from what side of the screen you're sitting on makes a huge difference to how you're perceiving that because one player's light bulb moment is the dm's oh my god my stomach has sunk how do i deal with this moment and it's such a shift like that that instant experience is can be hugely different from ah i'm a i'm colombo and i've worked everything out in an instant and the dm just has to kind of poker face it with beads of sweat just slowly dripping down <laughs> their face like yep yeah, that hasn't completely left us with four hours of void for me to fill so even on that moment to moment it's it's a really a, quite an interesting thought piece there about how the game is played and of course i think that's you know one of the reasons that dms are dms is because those instances are, can be depending on the type of dm the, the fun thing the bit where you have to go hang on okay well here's something i've just pulled out mass that ends up being one of the best sessions we've ever had and i hear that quite a lot in the dm circles of people saying all these npcs the knights of the realm and nine knights of the round table each with their families and their stories and their cousins and their nephews and they've all got names and they've all got backstories and we've got desires and needs players don't give two monkeys about those but billy bob the lettuce grocer down the road oh my god how much money do you need to send your son to school because we'll get you that money and the dm's just like man he is just he was just there. <laughs> it's just a happenstance. Absolutely. And I think, I suppose, a bit like we talked about the variety of actually crafting a, a campaign and creating fun, and certainly me as a player looking for a variety, I think probably most DMs probably look for, for the blend of the two. I, I think, you know, if, mm -hmm. you're, if you're going too far in either direction, then it's going to be tough. Uh, you know, to improv the whole way through is, you know, mm. going to, probably impact the, the overall player experience there's no two ways about uh -huh. it likewise yeah. trying to plan everything out um you know like a crazy neurotic dm is is, mm. is also going to make the experience pretty crap for the dm because you know it's a cliche but it's the best played plans of mice and men or dms frankly are about to get stumped <laughs> on by the barbarian that decides that actually you know this tribe of orcs nearby is way more interesting than you know mm -hmm. the, the, the maybe the main goal that the, the party was working towards um mm -hmm. you know and, and then yeah just just rains all over your parade <laughs> so earlier on you were saying that the dm of the older editions again is this adversarial role and i was thinking that's that's probably harder than it is now to be a dm and that's probably one of the reasons why people are less inclined to do it and i mean that because it's a piece of cake to kill the players. Like it's easy, easy peasy. You want to, if, if you really wanted them to lose, you could do it in a, a blink of an eye. Piece of cake. Trap does 60 damage. All the players are dead. Cool. I win. Ha ha. Everyone had fun. So trying to balance that while still trying to win would have been even more hard than it is now. And it's already incredibly difficult to walk that fine line of balance. So I can only imagine of how frustrating it would have been to have wanted to throw creatures at the end uh, the player characters because you want to give them a hurdle to overcome but then the same breadth be like no because i shouldn't because then we won't have a game to play absolutely and and to be fair i mean i, I don't think that's necessarily a product of the older edition but maybe more to do with the majority of the players playing mm -hmm. the game and, and also maybe experience that we've had elsewhere you know as i say playing mm -hmm. things like you know games like hero quest and stuff where maybe we we started out you know inevitably um you know impacted kind of the way that maybe a an 11 or 12 year old is able to deal with the fact that i've not read 50 books and and also maybe haven't had the experience of playing with or, or a lot of experience seeing other groups play mm -hmm. so i mean one of the great things these days is you know there's lots of really great examples uh, you know of, of campaigns that are played online yeah that even mm -hmm. if you'd never picked up uh, a pen and a dice before, you could watch some of those and, and hopefully pick up more good habits and mm -hmm, style mm -hmm. of play 
than the way we went about it. So I think probably, I wouldn't say it was a unique experience. Um, and I think very much playing D&D &D at a young age um, inevitably creates that. In fact, uh, I read a, a book with a, a fun title of a, the, the Elfish Gene um, by a guy called Mark mm -hmm. Paracliff. And I mean, he, he, I have to say, I could relate to, to that book a lot because um, mm -hmm. very much he, like me, played D and D back in probably the eighties. Um, you know, when when he too, you know, probably similar age to myself, mm -hmm. had kind of you know was playing with you know teenagers, um, people people <laughs> still at school, and that talked about crazy crazy arguments. You know, and at, the, the thing is, particularly at that age, is as those arguments would spill over from D and D. Um, and create a, right. ultimately create a terrible experience and vice versa. Mm. So like the separation between the, the player and character was non-existent in as much as, you know, if, if there was some kind of stupid issue that a 12 year old kid would have mm -hmm. out of game, then maybe that would come in game. So you'd, you'd be dumb to play with that, that kid, you know, if you, mm. if you just pissed them off. Um, so I think that that was crazy. And really, um, if I was to draw a line under all of that, please, learn from my mistakes never play D, &D <laughs> like that having said that even then there were there were a lot of memorable experiences so for all of that terrible you know crazy you know rules lawyering and you know devouring rule books yeah i remember like you know flicking yeah. through the monster manual and like the more i knew about the monster's mechanics the the, the better it was to, to stand a chance of winning so it's just insane mm, oh god um, yeah that, that that winds me up the wrong way completely as a dm nowadays yeah. absolutely and, and 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 whilst in some ways i'm really enjoying the fact that obviously i'm three editions on where mm -hmm. where a lot has changed and whilst broadly yes as a player you have the experience of kind of saying well okay i i used to know a heck of a lot in a previous edition you know, I've really not gone back. And almost one of the reasons I, I haven't done much DM and been reluctant to is almost the more DMing you do, you, the more you have to lift the lid on those mechanics. Mm. Um, and almost in a way, the more it may make it harder to be a, a natural player. Um, you know, of course, you can RP around that. Um, but in, in some mm. ways, it's it's quite nice to have a blurry, blurry line mm. along with the player. But I think when I talked a moment ago about some of the, the, the crazy wild experiences that that weird <laughs> style of play would have. Um, and I mean, like literally to the point where probably in my, my mid teens, a lot of those characters had grown up, if you like, and, and were kind of, you know, fairly high level characters, the ones that had managed to yeah. not get you know, murdered. And literally some of those, that, those, that bad blood and those arguments ultimately spilled into like literally creating, you know, warfare. You know, in, in our d and I mean, I want to say campaign, Jeez. but I mean, yeah. very loosely, um, where, again, the, the DM came a pretty awkward concept because, again, it was mm. that round robin thing. But, you know, where, you know, sort of our, our characters att attracted followers and this kind of stuff. I mean, you know, we, we literally, I remember like, you know, probably over a, a summer holiday or something where uh, the players were uh, diametrically opposed between two of them particularly. And, you know, I think that uh, one one of the players come to my own player character's um, mm -hmm. sort of stronghold. Uh, the, again, uh, you know, back, right. back then you got when you're a high level character. Um, and, you know, he was kind of harboring this character, which kind of kicked off this whole sequence of warfare where, like, you know, wizard disintegrated like a, a massive chunk of the battlements and all this kind of stuff. Jeez. So it, it was it was wild. And as a as an experience, I look back on it absolutely super fondly um mm -hmm. but at the same time like trying to dm that now even with all the experience and skills that i have um yep. would be an insane way to try and do it but you know pvp is just it's it's mm -hmm. not it's not even a it's not even a thing in dnd shouldn't be a thing um mm -hmm. and you know so to to kind of try and play that out where one character is just some level 18 character um you know yeah. is able to burst out probably 200 damage or something with a pair of lung swords <laughs> was just yeah. you know, insane so i suppose good experiences bad experiences from a very very specific style of play um mm -hmm, and definitely mm -hmm. you know the, the takeaway from that would be please just don't do it <laughs> Thank you. 
So I wanted to talk about there briefly. You mentioned about how the more you DM, the more you go inside the toolbox, which can make it more difficult when you return to being a player to divorce yourself from the character and the world. And you know that this guard you might be fighting has AC 12 and can parry. So I need to bear that in mind that he hasn't used his reaction yet. That kind of stuff. Mm. I'd like to add to that that yes, there is that element to it. And if you imagine a graph where you've got DM experience versus ability to role play, at some points DM experience will go over the top of that and it will make it harder to, to role play because you have that background knowledge. But I do think the more you DM, you're kind of capturing the role play experience of however many people you have at your table mm. so although it's not a one-to-one -one, it's like an xp share for a pokemon reference that you're kind of getting a diminished amount but from four or five people you you pick up things you say that was he approached that in a good way he he talked like that in a good way let me try and filter that in and the other thing that dming gives you is a respect for dms so when you do eventually return to sitting on the other side of the table, you go, okay, I might know this thing is a black pudding and it's going to burn all my armor, but my character doesn't and the DM spent time to set this up. So I'm not about to undermine him at the table by, I spend 10 minutes taking my armor off because I don't want it to get melted. Because you go, no, that's, that's, not, that's not the game. So that, I think DMing shifts or increases your experience, as you'd imagine, eventually for the better. There's a little bit of a of a growing pain in the middle where absolutely you'll know more than you should ever know as a player and it will freak you out and you'll answer questions that you shouldn't have answered and you'll know what's coming and you can't say no. But then eventually you do cross that gap and you do come out the other side with a more holistic view of the experience. I, I, I totally agree. And, and I think, as you say, I think that in a way it, there's a positive there in terms of immersing yourself in, in your character rather than what the player knows. And in mm. some ways, the more the more that the the player knows, you know, about if you like the meta of the the game, the more mm -hmm. incumbent it is on the character, and therefore the player driving that character to to, to almost um, step into some of those potholes for the for the benefit of the narrative. Yes. Um, yeah, for sure. And and I think that there's probably been, you know, and something particularly in the last two years, you know, has been you know something that is a new experience and a learning experience for me is absolutely saying, well, okay, I'm not playing to win anymore. That's not the style of, of gaming mm -hmm. we're doing. And actually there's a lot of RP value to be had by, yeah. as you say, almost being able to see a little bit behind the screen semi-consciously, yeah. but also to see, as you say, kind of understand a little bit what's perhaps going through that dm's mind exactly. yeah, and, and, yeah. And you know what they're trying to achieve yeah uh, and you can help them to achieve that goal which then brings the whole game up absolutely and, and you almost become a dm's helper at that point um mm -hmm. where where you can kind of see what's what may yep. be about to happen and and probably we've had some experiences between us in in that vein mm -hmm. in in sort of the campaigns that that we've both been involved in where particularly one of the groups that uh, we're in where I play uh, the uh, the wonderfully tempered uh, Grishnak. You know, it, in terms of you know, we, we have a, a real mix of player experience in that that group, mm -hmm. ranging from players that literally started at a session zero, having never ever played D and D, and, and yeah. perhaps had some associated experience from other similar sorts of games. To to obviously like myself with a, a a little bit of a, a weird set of experience I, I wouldn't say it's you know i haven't been sitting here playing 5e for the last 10 years as an adult mm -hmm. um so yeah you know, th there's definitely a learning experience for me there and i think particularly in the, inside that kind of party as a i suppose coming to it as a player with more experience albeit not all experience is good as, as i've just hopefully yeah. amply demonstrated um yeah you know, it, it, you know in some ways it's almost like you know some of playing two different games for me mm -hmm. but i think probably the one negative of, of coming to the table with more experience where you have that contrast is i think probably something i noticed fairly early on is 
um, and you probably saw it from a, a bird's eye view far better than I so behind the screen, is that it felt like some of the newer players kind of consciously or subconsciously took a step back and deferred very quickly mm. um, yeah. to the player at the table with what they perceived to be yeah. more experience. Yeah, they know what they're doing, so I'll just let them do it because they'll do it right, whereas I might do it wrong, which is a shame because there is no wrong. It's just it's just doing. Um, and, I, and I think I, I totally agree. And I think maybe there's um, you can nurture that in a lot of ways. And, and you know, I think one is to work with your your party out of game, in game, to try and help overcome to to, to avoid that having a, a detrimental impact on their game and, and, and reducing the, the fun and the experience for them because mm-hmm. you know nobody whether they, they do it deliberately or not deliberately nobody wants to sit there and say I'm 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 not going to make a decision about what we're doing because I'm just going to let the, the more experienced guy because you know mm-hmm. they're, they're not getting their time to shine so I think as a no matter how what level of experience you have at the table yeah you know very much a key facet of being a player is knowing when not to play and 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 yeah. then when you have to let other players shine and that's super super important with less mm-hmm. experienced players which are potentially more more fragile in, in that sort of sense where you know it, it's very mm-hmm. easy for them to defer so that that can be you know tough and and it feels bad for both parties in that situation where you you almost end up being the guy that does everything because the party's almost urging you to um yes but at the same time so i think one one great way to 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 break that cycle is to do dumb stuff so (laughs) yeah and and having that awareness of the the game as we talked about and and maybe a better grip on the mechanics and that sort of thing also gives you that opportunity to say well okay maybe maybe not you know if, if not doing something isn't an option and nobody really wants to step forward then then maybe I'm. I have an opportunity to show the players like they could so do this better, and their idea was way better than mm-hmm. than the guy that they're trying to push into. Um, yes, in, into a, the a square peg into a round hole. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, Grishnak is a bugbear, people. So he's not a, a particularly charismatic character. So it's it's fair to say that being pushed into an interaction is probably not a strong suit. Now it's fun to play out for me as a player. Um, to to kind of explore that, but absolutely, sometimes as a player, I'll be deliberately making a mess of things. Not just be, <laughs> not just because of dice rolls, um, yeah. but making making deliberately poor decisions to try and break that cycle a little bit of of you know thinking, oh well, you, you've got all the answers, you do it. And the reality is, hell, I don't have all the answers. <laughs> I'm just the same <laughs> as them. <laughs> I have all the answers. That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so talking of player experience then and those with lesser experience versus those with more, mm. what do you think is the best way for somebody to get more experience with D D? Sure. So I think um I mean obviously it's as always, it's great for for people to have some positive role models and, and obviously positive is is a relative thing. I mean, hell the whole point of D&D is you play it how the heck you want. And then as long as everybody mm-hmm. at the table is aligned on that that boat, and, and as you said about session zero and trying to define those parameters, mm-hmm. then absolutely fill your boots. If you never want a piece of exploration in your game and you, you know you want every game to be a dungeon crawl, then fill your boots. That If that's what everybody around the table wants, the only thing I would mm-hmm. urge to, for, for people to think about there is, I love food, I love chocolate. If I ate chocolate all the time and never any other type of food, I wouldn't like chocolate as much. And so mm. I kind of see where, whereas maybe I, I might still have some bias towards, I love the mechanics of combat. That's great. I played a lot of D&D that way. If I did that all the time, it, it would become, you know, I'd become numb to it and it would be less fun. So in a way you have to have mm. the, the contrast there. So I, I think in terms of how, how players can get better or new players can get better experience, I think... Don't always look to the the, to the more ex people experienced people around the table for mm. a role model. It's fair to say, um, because yeah, you know, they pick up bad habits and you know do all sorts of stuff. And and particularly, I think it's fair to say that there's probably that kind of middle ground of intermediate players, which are, are potentially the the very worst of all worlds, where 
they know enough about the game uh, potentially to to be doing it very badly you know very very meta uh you know <laughs> yeah. and, and, and all sorts of stuff like that you know wanting to call out active skill roles the whole time rather than explain yep. what they're doing how many hp have mm. you got you know let me dig into the mechanics of the yeah. game um, yep. and all that type of stuff because they understand the, the mechanics but maybe the, the finesse that they've not learned on top of that is to say well actually all of that breaks down the fourth wall of uh what what D can be there's probably loads and loads of good examples of of great players great dms online mm-hmm. but i think also uh, as a, a, a new player you also have to find your own groove as a person and and as a player i don't mm. think there's there's not a a one one size fits everybody solution here there's lots of things that you can do and frankly probably if i was really to put a single point to it then really it, it's just about trying to put yourself in everybody else at the table's shoes and and think about what you're doing and how it might affect everyone else and if the answer is mm-hmm. i think that's going to make it more fun for everybody then probably yeah. you're on your way to being a better player yeah that's that's bang on um and echoes kind of what jack and i are talking about in in ability too i think i've got one good way to get experience and one bad way to get experience from my experience <laughs> experience experience so as we kind of alluded to earlier on i do think that dming is a really good way and again at a, at a certain point you'll get more value out of it than maybe a, a, at other times but even just a one shot just to see what it's like on the other side i think that's like opening pandora's box of wow what the hell is going on but also there's this little nugget in there of wow okay i've realized quite what's happening maybe that's me being slightly biased from a homebrew point of view where i've put up a bunch of these spinning plates and any time a player can knock one down and there's no safety net for me there uh, unlike in a, in a published module where there's a lot of framework to, to catch you when things like that happen so maybe that's but just just from my own personal experience but i do think regardless dming will give somebody an appreciation because you'll get asked questions you never ever ever get asked and you have to think about things in ways you've never ever thought about things before and then when you go back to the other side you can go okay i'm not going to ask that question because i know when somebody asked me it was a pain in the ass and it didn't lead anywhere so now i know that's just a an avenue not to go down mm. i was going to say one 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 point on the interplay between the two as you say i think it there's, there's benefit to doing both like anything more rounded experience generally equals Mm-hmm. You're better on both sides of the screen in this case. One one question I had perhaps for you as 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 my uh-huh. counterpart across the screen. Personally, I tend to think it's great, as I mentioned, to have a, a mix of experience levels in the group. I think it, you know, if you have a group that's been adventuring together for for five, ten years, and all the players are pretty experienced by this point, that creates mm-hmm. one experience and all the players should be rounded and 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 great. Mm-hmm. Um but I think there are some benefits of having that mix. But how do you feel about um, the, the disparity between perhaps a DM experience and, and player experience? And what I mean by that is perhaps someone sitting behind the screen for the first time, uh, maybe, or, or maybe the second time, where maybe in their party, conversely, they've got obviously some a, a mixture of player um, skills and experience. Perhaps where you have a player that has a pile more experience, but being the DM mm. even, um, yeah, you know, and I guess that puts some pressure on 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 you behind the screen in that in that regard. So what's what's so what's the specific question in this instance then? So what is it like to DM a really mixed group? Uh, well, no, or... more more what what is the uh, how, how do you feel about having disparity between the DM's own experience and perhaps the experience of the party? So maybe you have a, a very inexperienced DM but a very experienced set of players, for example. Right, I see. So I think that there is and level of responsibility and onus on the dm to not know every rule absolutely not know every rule because that's unfair but to have a broad enough knowledge to run the game successfully one good thing about having experienced players is that they usually have a level of if they're good human beings they usually (laughs) have a good level of trust and experience and know when to help you out or at least if they've also DM before, they know when the DM is legitimately struggling versus is just you know scrabbling through their notes to find something specific. So 
in those instances it can work um we played a game quite recently where the dm is both relatively experienced player and dm however his one of his uh, his younger brother had come in for a one shot it's a second game of all time and i i basically said ask me all the questions that you need to ask about the game because the dm is busy dming so just just turn to me and say what the hell does this number mean or i want to do this can i do that and there's a level of trust there between myself and the dm he knows that i'm not going to be like yeah go on jump off that cliff because that'd be a laugh because he knows that I'm not going to do that and it doesn't make sense and it's not fun and so on and so on. So I've not answered your question because I'm now talking about experience on both sides, but there was an element there of an inexperienced player at the table. If I didn't have that, if I was maybe a player with an inexperienced DM, it can be tough, I have to say. There's always, in any walk of life, in anything you do, even with driving, backseat driving, is 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 a concept that exists and there's always Absolutely. that in the back of my head of i i might not have done it that way but that's the point of the game is that everybody has their own take on it whether yours is better or not i can't say now whether if if that maybe less experienced dm has done something that's led to something being not as fun or half an hour of faffing then the line is maybe slightly clearer as to which way it should have happened but you learn by doing and the only way to get better is you know you don't want the player jumping in and go let's just do this because then you're not really playing the game anymore and no one learns and everybody's just kind of bummed out so it's it's difficult but as i said earlier on the more you play the more knowledge you have of being a dm and what it's like to be on that side of the screen the more you know where to push things where not to push things where things make sense why rules are the way they are why spells are the way they are they have very particular intent and you know why, how, how things fit together, which helps with everybody, especially when you have new players on both sides. So if, if a DM is very inexperienced and they're playing with a bunch of experienced people, I would say the onus then flips entirely to be on the players then to be like, let's let's help the DM learn, essentially, in the same way that you 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 play the game for a different experience. And I was thinking about it earlier on when you were saying, Part of the fun of being maybe an experienced DM with inexperienced players is the same kind of enjoyment and fulfillment that teachers and educators do in that of uplifting people through this experience and watching them come out the other side of, hey, I know how this works now, and now I'm having more fun. Whereas before it was, I'm scared and I'm alone and I don't know what it's going, what's, what's happening. And then they come out the other side and go, oh, this is cool. I can, well, I could, maybe if I approach this thing from this direction and you go, yes, finally, that's, that's, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. That's great. Um, that's like one way you can do it. But then also likewise, when you're playing with experienced players and everybody, you, you open up a, a bunch of new avenues of, of different kinds of enjoyment. So you open up those kind of meaty, heavy RP plot hooks, those really friction encounters between, between players that might not be there as everyone's too giddy with excitement learning this wonderful new world which is two two sides of the same coin but from a dm's perspective that's how you get enjoyment out of the two different kinds of experience I, i'd agree and and if i you know if i think back all the way back to the beginning uh, a 10 year old probably me my mind was absolutely blown uh from that first game of D, and it didn't take much um you know i, I probably thought a kobold I picked, picked a few items off the kobold after i'd, I'd defeated mm -hmm. it and A, I was hooked, and B, you know, for me, at the risk of sounding, you know, too sentimental, it was it was a life changing experience. That that first game of D and D to say like, wow, okay, you've you, you've I touched on you know, little bits of fantasy in in my younger years, you know, maybe fighting fantasy books or, or something like that, where uh, you know maybe mm -hmm. it was something relatable. That first game where um, you know my much older brother. DM'd a, a, literally a solo game for me, um, just so I can hmm. see what all the fuss was around. Um, yeah, you know, it, it absolutely blew my mind. And I think that I think the other thing I'd say about player experience is there's no there's no negative here. I think that, that new players bring a lot of energy and, and excitement and, and eagerness to the to the table. That it's harder, even as a you know a great role playing character, is is 
just naturally harder for you to do as a as a human being. Um, you know, mm-hmm. despite the experience being different every time, and you know, even even today after all the adventures and all the characters that I've played over the years, yeah, I still get the rush of excitement when I peel the peel the the shrink wrap off that new character that I've just made and and plunge him into mm-hmm. into the universe for the first time. So I, I think I say there's no such thing as a a bad level of experience. But what I would say is like anything in life, it's incumbent on the people with more experience around the table. Um, I say it be that DM behind the screen or otherwise, um, to, mm-hmm. to help everyone else have fun and not just use their own experience selfishly. Mm-hmm. So one of the things I wanted to talk about earlier on about a good experience I've had of not getting very good experience was basically playing a one shot at level 20 which sounds great on paper you go wow this is this is my dreams have come true i can try weird and wacky stuff i've never tried before and it's going to be cool because i get to play with all these super cool abilities and features but ultimately it was less fulfilling i would imagine by far compared to bringing a character up to that level slowly uh, and why that is is because you've got four or five people all around the table who have no no matter how good a player they are a likely zero experience in that particular race class combo because they're trying out this weird and wacky new thing they want to try and i've never had the opportunity to do so i think i was playing a cleric at that time and you go hey holy hell this is complicated because the level 20 games are there was a there was a a distribution graph I saw once that was uh, levels of player characters in games of D and D, and obviously it, it starts kind of middling, shoots up really high of percentage of games that are playing between character levels three to say seven was probably the top the peak of the bell curve, and then from seven down to basically twenty or nineteen it went super low again. We're talking single digits percentages of games and then right at level 20 it just spiked again and that's just because there's people do one shots at level 20 just to you know mess around otherwise that would be a much flatter curve as you'd have all the games in between bringing people to level 20 but i have to say again it depends what you're getting out from it but in terms of learning and coming out the other side and being better none of that really happened because everyone was just you know combat was slow slower than it is normally because everyone had four pages of stuff they've never seen before okay what the divine intervention what the hell oh no wait can that work oh no wait it automatically works hang on okay so can i do that to win the game i don't know because i haven't built that experience with the dm uh if i do it and it goes well do i just shut the game down i don't know and that's just one feature of one class you might apply that out to four players with 40 features each you can see how that at the other end, I was just like, whoa, that was that was kind of a mess, to be honest. And you had combat that was difficult for a level 20 party, but the players were not. They didn't have that experience. They didn't know their characters inside out, which is implied a level of experience with a character in the, in the kind of challenge rating of making a piece of combat. So yeah, it was... It was like holy hell, this this combat's hard, and let me let me cast cure wounds, and maybe you know let me let me do healing word next turn. Oh wait, that's twenty HP in a barbarian that's got two hundred and fifty. Was that worth my action at a level twenty fight? Probably not, but I don't know because I've never had to do it before. <laughs> so uh, and and that ultimately is the, the disparity between the experience the player has of their own character in that scenario, mm-hmm. um, and I think. I mean, I could see how that could be massively complicated. And I think for me, there's no allure to that, that idea of saying, go, go, mm-hmm. go crack our level 20 character. And and the, probably the main reason is actually one of the the experience is that I enjoy most about playing D&D, I think is actually the anticipation and the, and the, the development of that character mechanically, as well, mm-hmm. as, well as both you know, in an RP sense. But to, to anticipate what that, you know what what cool stuff the next level might bring um yes. and and then to go play that out to have all of those options thrown at you all at once at once um yeah i could imagine both is 
confusing and, and you know creates unnecessary friction in the game mm-hmm. to, to say well you know the dm doesn't have much experience dealing with these crazy abilities the players don't yeah um and creates all that sort yeah. of problem but yeah also you you're absolutely robbing yourself of the most fun part which is actually the growth of that character and you know fit, figuring out not in one time but you know over over a long period of how that character is going to develop and i guarantee what you had in mind maybe for a build that you may have thought a little bit ahead of at the start and, and mm-hmm. how that might work out. Um, it's not the way ultimately it works out having played the character for a while, particularly mm-hmm. if that's mm-hmm. you're less familiar with. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it was, it was fun in its own way. Uh, and it was more of a thought exercise rather than a, a, a genuine play. But I was just trying to say like, don't, for, for maybe less experienced people don't see that as an opportunity to learn because chances are you won't you'll just be scratching your head and then do a not very effective turn and then maybe come out the less the other side not as enthused about something you were looking forward to but the the the, the biggest uh exemplar of that less so now but in in most mmos before they started enabling you to pay to level up you pay to skip the game so you're paying twice wants to have the game and then wants to not play the game but anyway rent for a different day aside before they introduced that you know back in vanilla when wow came out it would it would have been absolutely bonkers if you'd have said do you want to roll a level one character or do you want to roll a level 60 character well everyone would have just gone level 60 and it would have just been a complete mess <laughs> um so that's i think there's a reason why they didn't start with that not only because they hadn't a thought man that's a good way to make money but also because they want you they want people to guide them through the class so when people hit level 60 they know fiber works like this and life drain works like that and soul shards work like this and i think the same can be said to D, but at the very least you'll have a completely different experience than perhaps the one you were expecting at level 20 yeah uh, absolutely. yeah level 20 yeah have you you touched on it earlier i don't know if you've dm'd at all recently or it with anything other than that adversarial position before uh sure so i think um i i say um one of the one of the, the very different D D experiences i guess and, and as i said at the beginning it's it's always different and that's what keeps me coming back and, and probably most of us mm-hmm. yeah I, I dm'd a few months ago for a small campaign that I put together for my 11 year old daughter mm-hmm. so maybe a little bit of history repeating there and and hopefully <laughs> you know, start starting the right way mm-hmm. rather than uh, maybe some of yeah. the bad stuff that, that uh, habits I picked up but yeah so so both for my uh, girlfriend and my um, daughter which was obviously a or an experience in itself in terms of the mm. relationship that you have with the players is different of course and that you know whether the relationship is you know family or you know close friends uh, obviously also has a massive bearing between that that you know but, but the relationship sure. between the party and and what the experience may be like compared to obviously the the inverse of that of maybe playing with people that you've you've never even met maybe you just know one individual um you know that's brought you to mm-hmm. the table uh, and that that again presents opportunity for fun experiences plenty of opportunities so not so great experiences as well Mm. yeah okay so how did you find that differs then from being a player i know we're kind of trying to close the loop here between that how does a dm experience playing the game and how does a player experience playing the game i can say that it is hugely hugely different and i am continually surprised by the perspective how that differs between players and DMs, but what about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I think, in a word, responsibility is probably mm-hmm. one of the biggest differences. And whilst that, you know, we said earlier that players have responsibility for, um, you know, making it fun for everybody. Everybody has that. 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 But I think there's probably the, the most pressure on the DM to to not kind of mess up uh, to a point where nobody's having fun. Um, yeah, you know, that's always your the worst case scenario for you as a, as a DM. I think. Um, to think mm-hmm. that you know you, you've you've put the players in a situation or 
you've aided and abet the players putting themselves in a situation um, mm. where they don't want to be, don't enjoy. You know, they've ended up creating almost the wrong mix of the pillars for themselves. Um, yeah. You know, all, all of those, I think, are considerations as DM that simply you you don't have as uh, your own burden from as yes. a player, um, largely speaking. So I think that is a thing. I think, again, that, that same responsibility of making sure that the combat plays out in a balanced way mm-hmm. um, and someone doesn't just get a, get a few bad rolls and you know finds himself in real hot water or worse. Mm. So I think that you know probably the difference in the experience between the two for sure feels a bit more like you're the, the game maker. Mm-hmm. So inevitably mm-hmm. there's more responsibility that comes with that. And I think there's a lot of payback for that when the, the inverse happens, when things go well. Yeah, so that those things you you were worrying about turn out to be great. You know, the, the the combat works out great, and someone gets their moment to shine and and defeats a, a particular monster or you know a particular boss or something similar, mm. um, where it works out great. And and obviously as a DM, I think that's probably the fuel that would keep you going. Mm-hmm. There's there's a gratification there for sure. Mm. Um, I'm I'm personally very looking forward to a couple of these longer burn longer longer term strands and threads that i've, I've started to, to weave in and out of the narrative because the longer it burns the hopefully the bigger payoff there will be at the end mm. to not only the the one or two or three however many players it affects but also the table experience as a whole from my perspective like maybe this is a, again a unique to maybe more of a longer term campaign but it's i'm consistently surprised by the viewpoint of players versus the dm and i think this is something that every every dm has no matter the level of experience of the players and it's just a symptom of human nature that everyone's different and everyone experiences the different you know stimuli differently and, and so on that one thing that you might think was a hilarious goof they think was a plot to assassinate the king one thing that you thought was a bit a bit weird or a bit stupid they thought was hilarious and it and you're both no one's wrong no one's right it, it, but it's such a weird dissonance there to 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 come and be like wow okay that was i never even begin to see it like that and i've seen the whole i've seen the end of the story essentially and it's it's such a bizarre almost out of body experience to to have that that it continually surprises me to be like wow you guys really thought that when i spent three hours trying to make you think this how could i be so wildly wrong here that but you're not wrong it's just that 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 question to yourself is is why i keep playing because it, again it just builds your it, it makes you think why do people think this way and how do people think this way and why are they thinking this when i'm when i'm thinking that and i think it's a very good point and i think people and players pick up all sorts of things that as a dm you don't perhaps realize you're you're putting down um and and probably the one piece of experience that we haven't so much talked about is how it can impact the game and and ultimately the the end experience for everyone is actually the, the life experience the players have um mm. and, and that can be as trivial as hey i watched a film that had a similar plot line to what's going on right now mm-hmm. uh, and that already can you know kind of precondition them to to create that contrasting view for how you think it's going to play out exactly yeah yeah uh, so i think there with life experience it yeah that, that again that's a massive difference for players and and again, probably a, a way larger topic than we have time to cover today. Yeah, I want to I want to talk about to f- to finish. I want to talk about a good experience and a bad experience I've had. Though I won't do it in that order. We'll end on a, on a high. So a bad experience I have, and the reason I'm saying this anecdote is a because it's funny, and b <laughs> because it helps people to see you know for their own you know like you said earlier on, learn from my mistakes, learn from mistakes that other people have made is back in back in the the dark age before i had some some really concrete solid good games i was on the hunt for some other games 
and where I live, there's a there is a collective of of D and D players that I found on Facebook, and I said, "Well, hey, that that seems like a solid bet." Mm. So let me let me go here and play. So I reached out and said, "Hey, I want to come." They they play a whole bunch of games, but I was like, "I've only really got experience with Five E, so let's start with that, and then we'll go from there." Okay, here's here's the games. This one's got players, you know, player slots available. You join that. And I said, "Okay, dokie, let's let's go down." So I drove down into town one evening. Um, turned up by myself at this crazy new place, and oh, it's your first time. So you don't need to pay. Okay, right. Didn't know how to pay anyway, but fine. In we, in we go. No, no worries there. F- f- thanks, I guess. <laughs> to win. Um, yeah, uh, I get it. It's, you know, it's volunteer run stuff, so I do, I do get it. It was just a bit at the time. I'm a new person. Don't no ask me for money. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm paying for yet. Um, <laughs> uh, turned up uh, and I was like, okay, let's let's sit down and play this five e this five e table. Hi, people I've never met before. The longer the short of it is they were playing a vastly different game to basically what anyone else would want to play. It was very much a two of them wanted to play a very, very modified and specific. It was basically a riff on Magic the Gathering, which I know has a lot of crossovers, but the rules were changed quite a lot to try and adopt the rules of Magic. So you had different swamp magic and blue magic and all this other stuff that didn't really make sense to me and in at the time I said but D&D has rules for spell casting why are we why am I now apparently at the table as I'm building a character trying to learn how spells work in a completely different way when I've just spent a year trying to work out how they bloody work in D&D let alone this this weird modified way and my first red flag was that they took turns in DMing and that they both had player characters that they would play while still DMing. And I was thinking, that that doesn't sound effective. That doesn't sound right. Because DM PCs, uh, you've got to play them really carefully. And I didn't get the vibe from these people that they would do that. And it ended up being very much wish fulfillment for these people. Mm. And in terms of D- DM ability, it wasn't very good, I have to say that it took me about five minutes to say something or put the dm in a position that she said i don't know let me ask the other dm at the table what they would do in this position and then i was like oh you may as well just ask anybody because you're not really dming at this point anymore <laughs> you're just screaming for help so, so that's the part of the, the name yeah 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 so it was you know and it, probably because lack of experience on their part and lack of communication and so on and so on. And maybe a, a maturity thing, both in game and out of game. Um, so I, I quite cordially said, I'm not going to come back. That wasn't really what I was looking for. I wish you guys all the best, but that's not really the game I was looking for. It was very much a wish fulfillment for the for the two of them. And if anybody else wanted to come along for their journey of wish fulfillment, they could, which is nice of them. But that's not for me. Sure. Um so for a few weeks after that, I was kind of on the back foot because I was like, "Man, I want to go." That was that was weird and bad and pretty much a waste of my evening. Um, but a good experience. It's not. And this is this is not an experience that I've had personally. It's something I saw other people having. But I was in Brighton way back in February before everything went crap, and we were walking around a a board game cafe bar area during the week because we had some time off work and at about 4 p.m uh, there was uh, an adult man dming for a bunch of school kids from the school down the road so they're also in their uniform they've literally come out of school i've walked 200 yards down the road and gone in and he was he was dming for them for some after school activity telling them about some fantastical beast of nature that they were charged with felling for the good of the the town and and that really was a very wholesome moment and it was a really nice contrast between the the, the adult games that i'm playing and a part of to be like man there's just a bunch of kids having fun after school and it made me feel like when i used to leave school go home have a bowl of cereal and play on my n64 it was a you know it was it was a nostalgic wholesome experience uh for me yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I bet each and every one of them was having their minds blown. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to I wanted to join in. I was like, <laughs> man, I want to be part of this because they look like they're having so much fun. <laughs> so, so yeah, and 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 that's kind of the point, right? Is we said about earlier about the the experience always being unique in some way, shape, or form. Sure, there'll be some commonality. Hell, you're always going to pick up a D twenty. Chances are, but that you know, there's so much more that impacts the experience, and than probably we could we could ever do justice to. Um, sure. But I, I think in in both of those scenarios, at least some of the party was was having a having a whale of the, the time. Even even the bad experience, mm-hmm. the, the, the bad experience for them is is presumably what they they how they enjoyed to play. And I, and I think mm-hmm. there, like anything, it's about trying to find an alignment between a, a group of people that all want the same broad kind of experience. Yes. Uh, and I think that's obviously where there was a, a big clash in the first scenario, um, where in the second scenario, obviously, presumably there was, a, you know, nobody was forcing those kids to go at gunpoint. You know, they probably had quite open minds as to what Dungeons & Dragons looked like. And, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, ha- had that other thing we talked about, probably a, quite a veteran dungeon master uh, at mm. the helm, ready to to kind of embrace this whole big group of new players with all sorts yeah. of wild ideas and and different experiences, but ultimately probably a lot less in in Dungeons and Dragons, where everybody could have fun. And obviously, the as you say, you wanted to join in. I suspect the DM was having a load of fun because he could see the enjoyment they was creating, which I think is yeah, for is sure. ultimately probably what the DM is there to do. So two very different experiences, mm. and then it becomes about your own personal desire for what that experience should look like or you know how how it would be best suited to you rather than one being wrong and one being right crazy rules aside mm-hmm, some mm-hmm. people love homebrew that's that's their thing i'm mm-hmm. not going to stop them yeah exactly and i think that speaks to the value of the game as a, as a framework mm-hmm. in that you can can take it so wildly different directions that no other medium can and i think that's why I've taken to it in the same way I took to video games in that it was this flexibility and freedom back in the day that films and books can't give you. You have that layer of interactivity. And then again, DM layers on top of that, not only a layer of interactivity, but a whole layer of freedom that games often don't have because by nature of the code, they can't. Whereas by nature of human beings, you can because you have as much freedom as there is in human nature. I, I remember explaining D and D to my, I don't know, ten, eleven year old friends when I first played that that game with my brother. Um, and this mm-hmm. was like, what, like, what is it? How, how do you do it? Is it, is you know, is a board? Is there play, pieces? Is there, you yeah. know, and, and and things that they could only relate to. And I said, like, no, it's it's way more wild than that. It can be anything. <laughs> it it can yes, literally yeah. be whatever the hell you know you could have a you could have a castle you could have you know uh, a pet demon it Mm -hmm. anything's possible and i think one of the areas perhaps i i I didn't talk about particularly is the D &D experience but that ability to be morphed into anything Mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. truly just a, a, a massive form of escapism um yes. for you know for everybody and and yeah that, that's not a negative thing you know it's not oh my god i need to escape it's it, but it's it's mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. You know, like mindfulness or anything else you're you're stepping away from the drudgery and the stress of the day-to-day that we all have in our lives to say well okay let me let me put me in a place which has meaning and i can also mm-hmm. escape into that world and also escape personality if i if i want to and and and, yeah, and explore yeah. with all of that stuff you know for, uh, trial and, and and do all those sorts of things that you know ultimately come on to give you life skills and everything else um you know there's, there's such a broad mm-hmm. broad plethora to that one thing we're trying to label as D and the the D and D experience <laughs> um yeah exactly and, and you could ask a, a thousand um, uh, you know a million players and you know whilst there'll be some common threads Every one of them will have their own their own story to tell. That is a really perfect point to call today's episode to an end. We've covered ex- human the human experience, to use such a cliche term, I suppose. We are definitely going to have another one that will be on the 
mechanical experience is the best I can come off with the top of my head. Where I've got, I think both of us have got, again, a fair whack to talk about there in terms of on the table rather than at the table experience. So the experience of the characters and of monsters and XP and the bits and bobs like Those that. Those rules we keep talking about. Yeah, yeah, the framework uh, and everything that it includes. But otherwise, thank you very much, Ian, for for joining me today. Thank you, Dano. Appreciate the time. Uh, for everyone at home, if you have any thoughts or comments, which I'm hoping you, there's a lot of food for thought there on what we've discussed today. You can you can find me on Twitter at Dano underscore D and D. But otherwise, thank you all for listening and good night. <laughs>